We are still in 4.5 cams in motion and in this video we're going to be talking about the process of how you're going to use your automata simulation file to get measurements of your follower rod as it travels along your cam that you have in there. We will also be taking that data and inserting it into an Excel document. So you're going to want to open up Autodesk Inventor and Microsoft Excel as well. And you're going to want to open up that simulation file that you finished in the last video that we finished assembling and constraining. And then after you've done that, if your box isn't turned off, I'm going to turn the visibility off on that. I think we did in the last video, but just in case, right click the box, turn off the visibility. We're also going to make some of, actually make almost all of our parts transparent because the placement of the ruler, I have it constrained so it's actually sitting in the middle of some of these parts, which is going to be, which is going to make it difficult to take accurate readings. So we're going to turn some things transparent. So to get started, to kind of declutter a little bit, I'm going to collapse this follower. Just collapse everything, anything that's expanded over here. I just want to see just the parts. So the first thing we're going to make transparent is the cam. So whatever cam you have, right click it. And then down here you'll see a transparent option. So you can go ahead and click that. And you'll just see that it's still there, it's just see-through, it's transparent. Uh, the next one we're going to make transparent is the axle and handle. So I'm going to right click that and make that transparent. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the follower and the guide. So really the only thing that's turned on is the ruler that is not um, transparent. And then this plane is kind of bothering me a little bit. I think you might have this turned off already, but under the axle and handle, I'm going to turn off that plane, get that out of the way. Same thing for this one for the follower, which I believe is this angle of rotation. So I'm going to turn that visibility off. Just trying to clean things up a little bit so we can see this easily. And then you're going to want to switch to a right view. So now that I'm in the right view, uh, the, I'm going to turn off one more under the pair cam or whatever cam you have. I'm going to turn off this uh, work plane. It's kind of getting in my way. There we go. Kind of have some things cleaned up. So we have all of our parts there. I'm going to collapse this again. They're transparent and the ruler is nice and visible and we'll be able to see our measurements. And then the last thing to kind of get set up in our inventor assembly file here is we're going to expand the follower because we're going to be adjusting this angle to measurement these degrees a lot. So I want to expand that so I can have access to it. And now we're going to navigate over to Excel. So I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to click on open and I'm going to go to browse and we're going to navigate to our shared drive so I'm going to click on this PC and I'm going to scroll down find that shared drive the V drive D West the period I have you now in here you're going to see a new folder called data starter files and in there if you double click I've created a starter file for the four various cams you're going to notice a little bit of difference for the snail cam compared to some of these other ones. Um, so find yours and open it up. I'm going to go with the pair cam because that's the one that I'm using for this example. And I'm going to hit open. You'll notice up at the top it says read only. So I've made all those files read only so you do not edit my originals. So the first thing you'll have to do after you open up the starter file is a file save as. And then you're going to click this bar up here so we can tell it where we want it to save. So you're going to navigate back into period one, into your student folder, find your folder, and then we can save this in your, you should have a 4.5 uh, Autonoma simulation folder go ahead and click into that and save it in there and you can rename it you know 
your name, whatever your name is. And you could actually get rid of the starter file now because it's no longer a starter file. This is yours, right? And then you could save it. Then to get started, first thing you should do is type your name, the period I have you. And then after the cam name, I'd like you to type in the nominal diameter that you used. So like for my example, my nominal diameter that I chose within my group members was 1.5. So you'll put that right after the cam name. And then hit save again. So let's talk about how this document corresponds with your inventor document or file. So what we're going to do is type in these various degrees that you see over here into that angle 2 right here. And then we're going to calculate some data and enter that data into my table here. Now if you have a hexagon cam, you'll notice that the degrees are different. You notice that yours are in increments of 30 whereas all the other ones are in increments of 45. If you have the snail cam, you're going to notice that you have an extra degree at 359 degrees. So you're going to have to do an extra one. So let's go ahead and take our first measurement at zero. Notice the columns. Uh, you're looking for the bottom of the follower here, the length of the follower, and then the top of the follower. So what we're going to end up doing is using some equations. Um, pretty much by the time we're done doing this first one, you're only going to have to measure the bottom of the follower because we're going to use some Excel equations to calculate the rest for you to make your life easy. And we're going to run through that now. So let's go to Inventor. And under Angle 2 here, make sure you're not on Angle 1. You want to be on Angle 2. Click into that and type in 0 and then hit Enter. When you hit zero, you'll notice that the handle is now at zero degrees, the handle on the axle. And here in my pair cam, um, this, this is the follower. So let me just click on that. So this is the bottom of the follower. So when we're calculating measurements, that's the bottom. And then this is the top. So we'll be referencing the ruler for the top and bottom for this very first one. So in our Excel document, the first thing that we need to do is figure out the bottom of the follower. So let's look at that. So the bottom of my follower, now you got to be careful with this ruler. It's in eighth inch increments. I know we've been reading rulers at a sixteenth. So just be aware of that. So you got zero, one eighth, a quarter, three eighths, a half, and so on. So the top of, I'm sorry, the bottom of my follower, the bottom of the follower is at one and one eighth. So remember an eighth is it's a decimal that's 0.125. So for me, now yours is maybe different. The bottom of my follower is going to be 1.125. Okay, and then I can click off of that. And then now we're going to go locate the top of the follower at zero degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll on up here. And the top is at, let's see, five. And now it's landing in between these eighth inch tick marks. So I'm going to say that that's at a sixteenth. So it's five and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12, 13 sixteenths. So 5 and 13 sixteenths. Now, I don't know that off the top of my head as a decimal, so I'm going to use just a quick little equation. I'm going to do equals 5 plus 13 sixteenths. And that should calculate it for me. There you go. 5.8125. And the last part is the length of the follower. So what does that mean? That means from where this bottom of the follower, from there to, you know, the length there. I'm sorry, this is your follower right here. Sorry. This part, where are you on the orbit here? So we want to figure out that length from there 
to there. So that length is going to be the same actually for all of our um, for all of our data. So this length is going to stay the same the entire time. So that length is pretty much just your top minus the bottom. So to do that, you could double click in here. You could type in equal sign, and then you can click on the top, and then hit the minus sign on the keyboard minus the bottom, and then hit enter. So the length of the follower is going to be 4.6875 for all of these. So, but I don't want this equation in there. Um, it's going to cause some issues later. So what I want to do is just simply click on that and delete it. And it should be 4.875. Or sorry, 6875. 6875. Because I don't want that equation. I just used it to do the math for me but I don't want it to maintain that equation. Now what I'm going to do is just copy that down to the rest. So I just click on that, left click once onto that cell, go over here to this corner, you'll see a little crosshair pop up, left click, hold and drag it down, and it'll duplicate that data down into the following cells. And to make our lives a little bit easier, I don't want to have to take two measurements for every one of these every time I'm typing in the degrees. So if you take a look, the top of the follower is equal to pretty much just the length plus the bottom. So instead of calculating that every time, we can just use an equation, you know, for this cell. And then all we'll have to do is type in the bottom of the followers, and it'll automatically calculate this over here for us. So again, this is just this plus this. So instead of typing this number, and I'm going to backspace that. I double-clicked in there. I'm going to backspace. And then I'm just going to do equals, click on this cell, and then use my plus sign, plus this cell. And I'm going to hit enter. Because again, this is just this plus this. Now, I want to duplicate that same equation down throughout the rest of the cells. So that way when I start typing in my numbers here, it will automatically calculate. So again, I just left click on this cell once, hover over the corner, and drag this down to the remaining. I know that these numbers are not correct right now, but it's because I haven't calculated these yet. So let's do one more together, and then I'll let you do the rest on your own. So let's figure out the angle, or the bottom of the follower at 45 degrees. So I'm going to go in here, type in 45, hit enter. Zoom in here on my ruler. And I'm going to calculate where the bottom of the follower is, and I'm going to say it's at three quarters of an inch. So three quarters for me, that's 0.75. Okay, and then now I have gone ahead, notice it calculated this for me because it took this plus this to figure that out. Uh, do me a favor and do a quick save. And then now you can go ahead and finish the remaining columns. Uh, for or the remaining cells for the bottom of the follower for the various angles.